Destroying harvests for millennia. The stem rust pathogen of wheat is a sophisticated organism that continues to this day to threaten the security of global wheat production. The emergence of the UG99 group of virulent stem rust races underscores the need to better understand the mechanisms of resistance in wheat and to develop new varieties resistant to current races of stem rust. But the emergence and rapid spread of new forms of virulence also prompts more fundamental questions. How do new virulent races arise in the first place? And what factors contribute to the rapid and ongoing evolution of this historic pathogen? Stem rust of wheat is named for the powdery, reddish-brown, rusty-colored blisters or pustules that develop on the stems and leaves of susceptible wheat lines grown under conditions conducive to infection. This telltale reddish-brown powder found on infected wheat plants are spores of the fungus Puccinia graminus, the organism that causes stem rust. A single pustule can produce tens of thousands of these spores, called uridinia spores, with each one capable of infecting a wheat plant and producing yet another pustule. Carried by the wind, perhaps to a neighboring plant, perhaps to another wheat field hundreds or even thousands of miles away, a microscopic uridinia spore can land, germinate, and cause new infection. Once inside the host tissue, the pathogen extracts nutrients from the wheat plant cells, grows, and eventually produces a new generation of uridinia spores in such abundance that the plant's tissue erupts, releasing the new spores into the air to repeat the infection process elsewhere. On and on the cycle goes. With roughly two weeks from infection to sporulation, this cycle of uridinia spore multiplication can rapidly produce epidemic levels of disease. A severe stem rust infection in the field is a dramatic and devastating sight, but it is not the whole story. An important point about the uridinia spore cycle of infection is that it is a clonal method of spore production. Random mutations, genetic copy errors, and potentially rare cases of asexual hybridization aside, uridinia spores infect wheat tissue and produce exact copies of themselves. For a highly virulent race of stem rust like UG99, it is this cyclical process of spore multiplication that causes epidemic levels of disease within a season and necessitates the development and deployment of resistant wheat varieties. What a perfectly clonal cycle does not explain fully is the emergence of new virulent races. For this, it is instructive to shift our attention away from the wheat host plant and to continue to follow the pathogen. As the growing season comes to an end and wheat plants begin to set seed, senesce, and die, the stem rust pathogen does something remarkable. Instead of producing more uridinia spores, it begins to produce black overwintering spores, called teliospores. Although teliospores cannot infect wheat, they are important for two reasons. First, they can survive in a dormant state on dead wheat stubble, something the more sensitive uridinia spores cannot do. And second, it is in the teliospore stage that the two haploid nuclei fuse together, the first step toward creating new genetic variation and possibly new virulence. A period of cold temperatures is part of the environmental requirement to break the dormancy of a teliospore, at which point it can germinate and produce, through meiosis, haploid spores called basidiospores. Incredibly, these basidiospores infect not wheat, but certain species of the completely unrelated woody perennial plant genus Berberus, or barberry. Transported by the wind to barberry plants near wheat fields, Basidia spores can germinate, infect, and create blisters called spermogonia on the upper surface of barberry leaves. These blisters produce reproductive cells called spermatia, able to fertilize receptive cells called hyphae inside compatible neighboring spermogonia. In this step of fertilization, entirely novel genetic combinations are achieved. Once fertilized, 
the hyphae grow down through the barberry leaf, where they eventually produce stunning reddish pustules on the underside of the leaf, marked by numerous peach or orange-colored tube-like structures called esia. When exposed to moisture, these esia, quite visible to the naked eye, forcefully eject the next spore form of stem rust, esiospores carrying entirely new combinations of genetic material due to the cycle of sexual recombination on the alternate host, barberry. These microscopic esiospores can once again directly infect wheat, producing the brownish-red uridiniospores that are the hallmark of this disease. The complex and amazing life cycle of Puccinia graminis suggests that achieving durable resistance to wheat stem rust depends not only on the critical task of developing more resistance in the primary host plant, wheat, but also on investigating the prevalence and functionality of the alternate host, barberry, and utilizing knowledge of the complete life cycle of the stem rust pathogen to limit the emergence and survival of new virulent races.